SpaceX will likely face a more fierce battlefield in 2024, where its opponent will be many times stronger. In particular, SpaceX's rival, Jeff Bezos, blew Origin plans to buy the largest ever defense contractor, United Launch Alliance, to compete with SpaceX. Sounds crazy, right? So what will Jeff Bezos benefit from this deal? How has SpaceX prepared for this battle as well? We are about to discuss everything about this in today's episode of Tick Map. But before we begin, our team extends a warm welcome. Do not forget to subscribe to the channel and enable your notifications bell. You are always stay tuned with any of our latest news from SpaceX and the world of space. With that in mind, let's jump straight into today's episode together. United Launch Alliance the joint venture formed by Boeing and Lockheed in 2006 has historically earned profits, but as rival space launchers from Blue Origin to Firefly Area Space to Rocket Lab 2. Most famously of all, SpaceX has begun competing with it. Those profits have been dwindling. Lockheed's Martin Space Division, the closest proxy for measuring profitability at privately held ULA because its shares in that business profits has seen its operating profit margin erode from 12.6% in 2015 to just 8.8% .8 last year. This happens in the contest that 2015 is the first year SpaceX received United States Air Force certification to launch national security missions. Meanwhile, Boeing's Defense, Space and Security Division a somewhat worse proxy because it is not a purely space business earned a 9.8% operating profit margin in 2015, but suffered a $3.5 billion loss last year. That seems like a good reason for Boeing and Lockheed to want to sell the ULA. In March 2023, there was a confirmation that Boeing and Lockheed Martin had decided to put the United Launch Alliance up for auction. At that time, multiple theories soon emerged for who might end up buying this space company. However, everything was clear in November of the same year, as the long list of potential bidders was whittled down to a short list of just three potential buyers, including the contenders today. Cerberus, a private equity firm led by billionaire investor Stephen Feinberg, Dextron, an aviation and defense conglomerate and Blue Origin. Among them, Jeff Bezos' space company has been rumored to be one of the potential buyers for some time. It's safe to say that once Jeff adds ULA to the plan, the benefits for the company will be substantial. ULA has 2,500 employees and operational orbital launch vehicles. Blue Origin has more twice as many employees and no operational orbital launch vehicles. An acquisition would provide Jeff with many things. First of all, with this acquisition, Blue Origin will gain access to ULA's technology, which includes rockets, satellites, and other advanced space-related equipment. This could give Blue Origin a significant advantage in the space industry and helps them ahead of the competition. The second is an expansion of facilities. ULA has facilities and infrastructure in multiple locations across the United States. By acquiring ULA, Blue Origin would be able to expand its operations and increase its capabilities by utilizing these existing facilities. Thirdly, ULA is a major player in the space industry and has a strong presence in the government sector. By acquiring ULA, the Blue Origin will be able to increase its market share and, and potentially secure more government contracts. In addition, the Blue Origin purchasing ULA would remove pressure from both companies to deliver BE-4 engines and improve the reusability of Vulcan since ULA would be forced to use BO engines. At the moment, ULA's independence, at least it'll put some pressure on the BO to deliver and incentivizes them to make the Vulcan reusable. One more advantage if this were to happen is that more of the Kuiper launches would be consolidated into one company which might reduce costs, and the BO would have an orbital launcher available immediately. This also could have a negative effect on New Glenn's development as it would no longer be essential to the BO's plans. Ultimately, the BO is already so behind and moving so slowly that any action like this that removes the pressure to deliver could mean New Glenn never sees the light of day. Overall, the last thing the BO needs 
is another reason to slow down the development of their own projects. Not only that, Gavin Blow's current revenue. Bezos would have to put in a lot of money to make such a deal happen. ULA is not publicly traded, but it is parent companies, Boeing and Lockheed Martin are. Based on their financial disclosures, ULA could be worth anywhere between $1.2 billion and $7 billion. As estimated, the rocket maker could be worth $2 billion to $3 billion in a private sale. In 2015, Aerojet, a manufacturer of rocket engines, offered to buy ULA for $2 billion, but the deal never came to fruition. The next stop is integration challenges. Combining two large organizations with different cultures and management styles can be challenging sometimes. There may be integration issues and conflicts that could impact the success of the acquisition overall. Last but not least, it's about regulatory hurdles. Mergers and acquisitions and the space industry are subject to strict regulatory oversight. It is possible that the acquisition could face regulatory hurdles that could delay or even prevent the deal from going through. Overall, the acquisition of ULA by Blue Origin has both pros and cons. While the deal could provide Blue Origin with valuable technology and infrastructure, it also comes with financial and organizational risks. Only time will tell if this acquisition was the right move for Blue Origin. However, if Jeff Bezos' Blue Origin successfully buys ULA, it means Blue Origin will go toe-to-toe -to -toe with SpaceX on lucrative government contracts. Once Blue Origin was to buy ULA, it would literally bring an old-school rocket powerhouse under the space startup's umbrella. As you might know, ULA was born in an unlikely marriage in 2006 when the Pentagon allowed Lockheed and Boeing to form a joint venture that gave the newly formed company ULA a monopoly on all military launch contracts. At the time, the Pentagon was focused on assured access to space, emphasizing reliable rockets that would fly successfully over cost. ULA essentially operated as an arm of the Pentagon, while racking in billions of dollars. However, by 2014, ULA wasn't the rocket industry stalwart it had been since its founding almost a decade earlier, when it had a monopoly on lucrative Pentagon contracts to lift national security satellites into the orbit. The company has since been overtaken by Elon Musk's SpaceX as the top launch provider, particularly as the development of ULA's next-generation rocket. The Vulcan Centaur has had several snacks. The heavy lift rocket, which would compete with SpaceX Falcon Heavy, was supposed to have its inaugural launch on the Christmas evening, but that has now been pushed back to sometime in early 2024. ULA's other rockets have a proven track record. The company has logged more than 155 successful missions, but again, that number is far eclipsed by SpaceX which has completed nearly 300, including 96 launchers of its Falcon rocket in 2023 alone. But still, in November, ULA was awarded a contract for military launchers beginning in 2025, while SpaceX was contracted for 10. That makes the company an attractive prospect for Blue Origin, vying for government contracts without nearly as much success. In response, on April 24, 2023, it was announced that the United States Space Force had approved Elon Musk's SpaceX to lease a second rocket launch complex at a military base in California. Under the lease, SpaceX will launch its workhorse Falcon rocket from Space Launch Complex 6 or Slick 6 at Vandenberg Space Force Base, a military launch site in North Los Angeles, where the space company operates another launch pad, the SLC-4. This implies that Elon Musk intends to compete with ULA and Blue Origin for the Pentagon's Phase 3 National Security Space Launch. The Vandenberg Space Force Base allows for launches in a southern trajectory over the Pacific Ocean, often used for weather monitoring, military, or spy satellites that commonly rely on polar Earth orbits. In short, at a glance, the merger between ULA and Blue Origin will bring several advantages for Jeff Bezos. But as he said, there are also many disadvantages on top of that, with the knowledge skill, experience, and continuous improvement. Although SpaceX's two rivals combine, it is so hard to break SpaceX monopoly and rocketry. And that was a wrap for today's episode. Make sure you subscribe to the channel and turn on your notifications bell so you never miss out 
on any of our upcoming space important updates. Your support is literally our driving force to continue delivering high quality content. Thank you, and we're looking forward to see you in the next video.